Are you here to cross swords, dear traveler? I can't believe you made it up to Dragonspine all this way on your own. Tell me, traveler, why are you here? Have you come to realize what a monster I am? You should be careful. Who knows what the Snow Queen of Mondstadt might do to you? A devious woman who can bewitch others with just a single look. If you happen to cross her, you will find yourself at the mercy of her vengeance. Ah, uh, of course. I forget at times that you do not hail from Mondstadt. Forgive me. You have such a warm and comforting presence. I have to remind myself that you are an outsider like myself. The Snow Queen of Mondstadt is an old children's story that has been carried down by the Lawrence clan for centuries. The Snow Queen is a spirit who wanders over the icy vales and plains. It is not clear where her origin lies. Some claim she was a princess who was betrayed by her betrothed. Others claim that she is an embodiment of winter itself. Silent. Graceful. Deadly. She is often credited with luring astray travelers who do not prepare for the harshness of weather here. It is said that they will see the outline of a pale, shimmering figure. In their desperation, they will follow after it, only to be found later buried under the snowdrifts. She's often used as a threat to keep children from misbehaving by their parents. Few have seen her and lived to speak of the encounter. She is also rumored to be a powerful sorceress who can bend the wind and snow at her will. It is not a tale that is shared often outside of the Lawrence clan. In this instance, I do see the merits in a tale such as the Snow Queen. The world is a dangerous place, and far too often, people are unprepared for what might lurk beneath the surface. What, so you don't believe it? I suppose I couldn't hide the truth from you for long. <laughs> I am no such witch. The only catalysts I have handled have been in boxes for either the Lawrence Library or the Library for the Knights of Avonius. At least there appears to be one person who doesn't believe all the rumors, all the little lies. I suppose I could see why some might choose to give me the title of Snow Queen. I do make quite the fearsome figure with my claymore at my side, there would be few who would be so foolish as to directly challenge me. All they can do is use their silly little words. They're just like the snow. Harsh and cold to the touch. But it can quickly be brushed aside. <sighs> what brought you to Dragonspine all on your own? Especially given the stormy weather. Adventurers should know better than to travel in the middle of the winter. Especially so close to the solstice. There is far too little daylight to aid you in your journey. Looking for me? I see. Well, I'm glad to see you remembered to avoid the lake at the foot of Dragonspine. Well, I'm glad to see you remembered to avoid the lake at the foot of Dragonspine. Although... I would have loved to have dragged you down to the icy depths. <laughs> you know, people tell me that if I just spoke more softly, and was more polite, or acted more differentially, others may find it easier to forgive me. But the only reason they think that way is because they've never been branded a pariah before. There is no easy path to redemption when you're a social pariah. 
You've never seemed to care for all the rumors surrounding me. Never mind the ones surrounding you. <laughs> uh, pardon me. I was not so careful with my footing. I will be sure to exact my revenge upon the rock for making me trip and upon you for seeing me in this state. I'll try to watch my steps with more care. We're not too far from my campsite. We can rest there until the storm passes. Actually... I must say this now, so listen well. I... am glad that you are here, Traveler. Please forgive my frosty reception. I just had to get away from Mondstadt. I thought my troubles were over once the townspeople started to tolerate my presence. It was nice to not have to go out and cook my dinner every night after I hunted for it. It was not to last. No matter what I did as part of the nights, it wasn't enough. Becoming captain of the reconnaissance company wasn't enough. Nothing I did was enough. All I wanted was to be part of this city of freedom. When I would go out, people would simply ignore me, or worse, pick fights with me. <laughs> if only I could stop tiptoeing around everyone all of the time, and just get out of there. And just get out there and make them respect me the old-fashioned way. As in, we square off, and if they win, I humbly accept my punishment. But if they lose, they must acquiesce to my demands. Such as... Well, I mean, if I want to buy a loaf of bread, I take my darn money for crying out loud. I don't recall much from the previous Winter Festival, but I did enjoy my time with you and Amber. Even if Amber thought my snowman was too artistic, how was I supposed to know that the conventional style is more round in appearance? I'm still not sure if she was complimenting me or mocking me. Perhaps I will make a giant snowman in the proper style large enough to fit inside and surprise any suspecting wanderers. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh. You have something for me? <laughs> I see. A gift for the Winter Festival. And what is this? A heart-shaped bow? The nerve on you. Are you exacting revenge? Or is this your type of joke? see. A bone whistle. And what is this? You even included a vial of mist flowers with it. How kind of you. I suppose you do remember all of the secrets of the Bone Whistle. I accept this gift, and I look forward to the day when your reckoning will come. We will see how long you can fend me off now that I have this whistle. It'll make the whole thing much more... exciting. I don't usually believe in such things. But perhaps our meeting tonight was a stroke of good luck. May I lie in your lap, Traveler? <sighs> you are quite warm, Traveler. 
I suppose this is just another manner in which you have prepared your vengeance. No matter. like to play me a lullaby on the bone whistle I could use a deep and everlasting sleep mm. you're right it would be best to wait until the storm has stopped before we test your gift thank you for being here with me traveler I'm glad that you have been able to see past my noble background. I promise that I will keep living a healthy and happy life. I have to enact my vengeance upon you for these fine gifts. So, will you stay with me for the night? Or will you leave me to scout out of the frozen tundra alone? People are usually put off by the cold and have an aversion to danger. They don't realize that there is much to explore beneath the icy exterior, if they were willing to spend the time and energy. And thank you, Traveler, for seeing past my own icy exterior. <laughs> we can set up the tent for both of us later, but for now, I would like to rest. Let me keep my head on your lap and sleep. 